Hi everyone, it's Kara Wedby with Simply Magical Vacations by Kara, your favorite magical vacation specialist coming to you live for our Friday News Live show. It is Friday, March 29th. We're almost to April now, and there is a lot of interesting news that broke this week. Um, first of all, we need to talk about the new rules at Disney Parks, and these start May 1st, except for the ice rule, which started yesterday. So we'll talk about the ice rule first. <laughs> Dizzy has clarified this. It says no loose or dry ice is going to be permitted in our parks as of March 28th. Reusable ice packs are recommended. So if you didn't know this, you can bring a cooler with food in it or drinks or whatever into the Disney parks as long as it's soft sided and as long as there's no glass containers that you're bringing into the parks, then you're allowed to do that. So people bring food and they snacks and drinks or whatever, but apparently they were using loose ice in the cooler, so they were just filling their cooler with ice um, instead of using ice packs, and for some reason it says dry ice, so I don't know who was using dry ice, but somebody was, <laughs> so no more loose ice or dry ice in the parks, and I think that's probably a safety issue. I guess people were dumping it out, and then somebody was slipping on it or something, so uh, make sure you're using an ice pack, or Disney said today, if you are using ice, but it's in a sealed container, like a Ziploc bag or something, and it's not loose in your cooler, then you can do that too. Also, if you have ice in your refillable mug or in your drink cup or whatever, that's fine as well. They're just talking about ice that's loose in a cooler that could fall out and somebody could slip on, I guess. So that started yesterday. The rest of these new rules start uh, May 1st, okay? So the biggest one on here is no smoking. The parks, Disneyland and Walt Disney World Parks will be smoke-free starting May 1st. So there will no longer be a smoking section in any of those parks, okay? Um, which I'm glad about because I hate having to hold my breath walking through the smoking section because it's usually like a shortcut from one land to another and yeah. So, um, and I'm allergic to cigarette smoke. So no more smoke smoke-free parks in Walt Disney World and Disneyland at ESPN Wild World of Sports in Walt Disney World. There will be newly designated areas in Disney Springs and in downtown Disney at Disneyland. Also outside the parks is where these smoking areas will be moving to. And also there will be designated areas at the resorts. So no more smoking inside the parks. And that includes vaping because Disney's original rules, if you look at them right now on their website, say no smoking except in designated areas, and that includes vaping. So I'm assuming that this no smoking rule also includes vaping because that's nicotine. That's just, I mean, the smoke has nicotine in it. It's still not good for anybody around you, especially kids. So um, no smoking, no vaping starting May 1st inside the parks at Walt Disney World, Disneyland, and then the other areas at Disney World like ESPN. ESPN Wide World of Sports. Um, the next big thing that's caused a lot of controversy is strollers. Okay, so no more stroller wagons. And you, if you saw the post I put on my page, you can see what these things look like if you don't know. But the stroller wagon is literally a wagon. Do you see it down there in the bottom corner? Um, this is what it looks like right here the stroller wagon um and i've seen these recently like the last couple times i've been to the parks and they're huge i mean you could fit like several people in those wagon things <laughs> so um and they do there's usually several kids sitting in there and all kinds of bags and it's like storage cart or whatever um so those are no longer allowed um also and actually wagons were never allowed. So if you look at Disney's rule, just like a regular wagon, like a red wagon or any other kind of wagon has never been allowed. And that's still the case. So if you're trying to bring a wagon to the park, they're going to say no. Um, but starting May 1st, no more stroller wagons. And I believe the brand that makes these is Keens, I think is the name of it. Um, also, no more strollers bigger than these dimensions. So it must be 31 inches wide and 52 inches long or smaller. Now, several strollers meet those guidelines, even the ones that seat like three kids, you know, right behind one another, the single line strollers, not the ones that are like this way, <laughs> but the ones where the kids like right behind the one in front of them, those kind, even you could get a three person or three kid stroller that has them seating right behind each other and still fit these measurements. So 31 inches wide, 52 inches long or smaller. Also, a lot of special needs parents have like a special chair um, or stroller or something for their kids, those typically fit within these size requirements as well. And of course, you just talk to Disney. If, the, if you need an exception, if it's a special needs requirement, um, talk to them. 
but most of those things fit between the 31 inches wide and 52 inches long. So just letting you guys know, that all starts May 1st, except for the ice thing that started yesterday. So that's the new rules at Disney parks, both at Walt Disney World and Disneyland, so the American theme parks. Um, and I've heard a lot of people say they really wish that Disneyland Paris would get rid of smoking. I know it's different in Europe, so <laughs> so sorry for my friends over there. I'm sure that would be a difficult uh, feat for them to be able to get rid of it there, but we'll see. Okay, so let's move on to some more news. There are some Star Wars Land updates, and these were released um, this week as well. I want to say yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Okay, so... I was reading through and I noticed that if you are going to Disneyland to go to Star Wars Land after June 23rd, so remember May 31st is when it opens there through June 23rd, that time period you must have a reservation to even get into the land and only one reservation is allowed per person during that time period. So from May 31st to June 23rd, if you're staying on property at a, at a Disneyland resort, one of their three on property resorts, you will automatically get a reservation time assigned to you and everyone in your room. Okay. But it's only going to be once that you can go to the land for that reservation for the time that you're at Disneyland. Um, and also they said they're going to restrict, put a time limit on those reservations. So again, this is at Disneyland. We, we're not hearing a lot about Walt Disney World yet. So with Disneyland, those reservations from May 31st to June 23rd are going to be time restricted, but they have not decided yet, determined how long a period of time that's going to be. Um, the other thing they said about those is there will be no standby line to get into the land. Everybody listen, no standby line. So there was a rumor that, that people could still get in the standby line because Disney wasn't going to have a bunch of whole irate people who didn't know about this and had booked their trip and don't follow Disney news and had no clue that they couldn't get into Star Wars land and then be all upset and want to have a standby line. That's not the case. They're, you're just going to be upset. So if you do not have a reservation from May 31st to June 23rd to get into Disneyland's version of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, you are not getting in. There will be no standby line. There will be no other option for you from those dates. So May 31st to June 23rd. They still have given us no information on if you are not staying in one of those three on property resorts, how you will get to book a reservation. Those will be limited and first come first serve. I have a feeling they're gonna be online to book them, but they have given us no information on when that's gonna be yet or how. So as I get that information, I'll let you know. Now, after that date, so we're going to be in Disneyland at the end of July. After June 23rd, so starting June 24th, if you are going to Disneyland this summer and you want to get into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, here's how it's going to work. Um, once your park ticket is scanned at the front gate of the Disneyland park, your Disneyland app will allow you to go in and put yourself into the virtual queue to get into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So they will use a virtual queue like Universal uses for a couple of their rides to get into the land. And so you cannot go back into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge after June 23rd unless you have that reservation, unless you have, it's not a reservation anymore, it's a virtual queue line time. So unless you are in the virtual queue and have your comeback time, you may not go back to the land. Okay, so this is June 24th after in Disneyland. So I'm going to be there during that time, so I'll have to use this system. So basically, they don't want people waiting around in line to get into the land. So they want you to come back to the front of the land with your comeback time on your app and show it to them, and they'll scan it, and they'll let you in. So you have to scan your Disneyland ticket at the front gate of the park, then go into the app, set up a virtual queue time for you to come back to the land, and that's when you get to go. So that will happen starting June 24th and after in Disneyland at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So I'll let you know how that works when I go out there. But um, I don't know if there will be a time limit on those times either, like there was for the reservation times, or if it will just be you, you can get in the land and stay there as long as you want, but you must have a, a virtual queue time to get in. So I, I'm not really sure, but we'll find out. Um, so that was announced yesterday as well for Disneyland's version. Um, so just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that, but no standby line to get into the land. If you do not have a reservation time at Disneyland or you do not have a virtual queue comeback time, you are not entering Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So just fair warning on that. And again, there's no fast passes for the rides for the foreseeable future. Okay. 
New Disney Lego minifigures, we talked about these last week, are going to be available on Lego Shop Online Store starting May 1st. So if you have the first series of Lego minifigures, like I do, um, and you want to get the second series, they start selling online on Lego's online site starting May 1st. This is the new minifigure Disney Legos. Um, Effective immediately, Trader Sam's Grog Grotto and Tiki Terrace will now be opening at 3 p.m. at Disney's Polynesian Resort in Orlando. Trader Sam's Grog Grotto will now be closing at midnight instead of 12.30 a.m. And Trader Sam's Tiki Terrace will be closing at 11 p.m. instead of midnight. No word on why this change has been made. And Disney has yet to update their website reflecting the changes. But they have signs outside both of those locations saying the new times. So there you go. Um, yesterday, a new pattern called Mickey and Friends was released at the Vera Bradley Disney Springs store. So if you're a Vera Bradley fan like I am, this is the new pattern. It's called Mickey and Friends. That Look, there's Donald and Daisy and Minnie and Friends on there, and it seems to be like a gray background. Um, it's called Mickey and Friends, and again, it, it was available starting yesterday at the Disney Springs Vera Bradley store. Um, now, George Miotes, who is um, the proprietor of Wine Bar George in Disney Springs, um, announced this week on Twitter that they are introducing a brunch at Wine Bar George starting March 30th. Join us for our new Wine Country Brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. This is in Disney Springs from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So that's exciting. Um, also announced this week was the way or the running time for Avengers Endgame, the movie, which I definitely am excited to see. Um, <laughs> the runtime is going to be three hours and two minutes. I sure hope that they have an intermission because I'm going to need to go to the bathroom somewhere in there and I don't want to miss anything. So <laughs> they haven't announced that yet, but I hope they do because three hours and two minutes is a long time if you're like eating popcorn, you know, drinking a drink, having a snack or whatever during the movie. Um, Jim, you... 2021 is going to be the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. They are going to want to have the whole resort, every resort booked for the whole year is their goal from what I'm hearing. So when they release the 2021 packages is when we can actually book you. That's when I can actually quote you and book you. They are supposed to release the 2020 packages somewhere in mid-June. So next year, so June of 2020 is probably when they'll release 2021. So in 2020, send me an email, say, hey, we want to plan for our anniversary at Walt Disney World, um, or we want to be at the 50th anniversary in Walt Disney World, and I will put you in my queue line. I have a queue <laughs> for quoting when they haven't released the packages yet. So I'll put you in my quote queue, and we'll make sure that I quote you first for that. So get in my queue starting in 2020 for that one. <laughs> um, okay. The new menu for this Wine Bar George brunch includes crispy mac and cheese bites, eggs benedict, and Dole Whip mimosas. Rever reservations are available on Open Table to book those now. Um, and again, it's Saturdays and Sundays from 11 to 3 at Wine Bar George. Um, they're going to have hummus, jicama, kohlrabi uh, salad, grilled romaine, spiced olives, crispy mac and cheese bites, Kendall Brook smoked salmon, Boards, they're going to have an artisanal cheese board and a charcuterie board and a big board. Um, then they're going to have main plates of French toast, steak and eggs frites, burrata, sausage gravy and biscuits, eggs benedict, wine country omelets. They will also have sweets like cinnamon buns, olive oil cake, chocolate chip cookies. Um, how do you say this? Simifredo? Simifredo? Key lime pie and a rosé cookie. The Dole Whip Mimosa is Moscato, Dole Pineapple, uh, soft serve, which is non-dairy, and Prosecco. The sides are chicken sausage, bacon, house-made buttermilk biscuits, eggs, you get two of them, uh, potato hash, and polenta cake. So that is the menu for the new Wine Country Brunch at Wine Bar George in Disney Springs. You're welcome, Jim. Um, okay, here is a picture of what they're going to be offering in the new Mickey and Friends pattern at Vera Bradley, and again, that started yesterday. I like this little um, backpack over here. Let me get my finger up there. Over here um, on the ends, that might be a good park bag. So I'm gonna have to check that out when I get there. Um, information from travel agents confirmed that there are two Halloween party nights that are gonna be available at Disneyland Paris in this year. One is gonna be Saturday, October 26th for 51 pounds and 58 cents. 
Um, no, that's euros. And then Thursday, October 31st, it'll be for 59 euros and six cents. I don't know if they say cents on a euro. I don't 59.06 euros. <laughs> somebody, somebody from England or not England, they're pounds, but somebody in Europe, tell me how you say that. Um, starting August 12th is when the new NBA experience is going to open Disney Springs. So we've been talking about this for a while. It's been under construction for a while, but August 12th has been listed as the opening date for the new NBA experience, which will allow guests of all ages the chance to try out the life of an NBA player. It has been developed in conjunction with Walt Disney Imagineering and in collaboration with the NBA, and it is a one-of-a-kind destination which will feature hands-on activities that highlight the action and excitement of professional basketball. You can experience one of the biggest milestones for a basketball player at the NBA draft with a photo moment that recreates the atmosphere of the draft stage. You can track and improve your jump shots and passing skills in a replicated NBA combine challenge, complete with a scouting report that highlights your stats at the end of the session. You can step onto the court and hear the roar of the crowd as they maneuver through a series of timed shots to aim for a high score. You can execute the perfect slam dunk, just like NBA superstars captured by cameras surrounding adjustable baskets. Oh, great, adjustable. I'm sure so maybe I can do one. Um, test, you can test your ball handling skills with an interactive trainer who will challenge you with a variety of dribbling routines. And you can use an oversized slingshot to launch basketballs at hoops of varying heights, making as many shots as possible before the clock runs out in this thrilling time challenge. That sounds like fun. You can immerse yourselves in the rich legacy and history of NBA and WNBA championship winning teams. You can access a team locker room that showcases up-to-date statistics and visuals of top NBA and WNBA players. You can test your knowledge of the NBA and WNBA past and present during a trivia game with up to 25 participants competing against one another to be the champion. You can enjoy two 180-degree cinematic presentations that showcase the in-air arena experience moments before the start of the game, as well as special stories from the players' perspectives. You can take a seat in an interactive multi-screen module to watch replay clips or NBA games using the tools at your station to make the right calls. You can play interactive basketball games from the fan favorite Papa Shot to modern video games. So that's what's coming to the NBA experience in Disney Springs starting August 12th. Um, okay, this is exciting. Tyler Pounds Air Regional Airport, which is here in East Texas, has announced that Frontier Airlines is going to be one of its new commercial service carriers. So Frontier Airlines is a discount airline, like low cost airline. Um, currently they're offering kids fly free and they've extended that through November 19th. So um, if you want to fly, I tried to see if they were gonna fly to Orlando and I could not find that for the dates I was looking for, but that may happen after the dates I was looking for. I did search for Tyler to New York and they do fly there starting September 24th. So it looks to me like the end of September is when they're gonna start flying out of Tyler Pounds Airport on Frontier. So if you wanna check those for flights you have going out September 24th and after, it looked like um, three days of the week they were flying out of there. It was like Sunday, Wednesday, no wait, Sunday, Tuesday, and a weekend day, maybe. So anywho, it wasn't every day, but that started at the end of September. So maybe after that, they might release some more options or dates or whatever. And if they fly to Orlando and you live anywhere in this area and don't have to drive to Dallas to fly, that might be a good option for you. So just wanted to tell you about that. Um, Disney Vacation Club points for Disney's Riviera Resort went on sale on March 27th. I'm a Disney Vacation Club member, so I could add on to my membership starting now if I wanted to add on points at Riviera Resort. Um, I don't. <laughs> so maybe someday I would make a video on Disney Vacation Club and how best to buy points and use points, etc. But that's not a great strategy to add in a whole bunch of different resorts. Anywho, though, if you're new to Disney Vacation Club and you want to buy points at the new resort, that opens up to April 15th to the general public to buy points there. So it's for us members right now through April 15th, and then everybody else can do it at April 15th. The points are set at $188 a point with $8.31 per point annual fees, annual dues. Um, that's really high. So if you're wanting to buy it one, I don't know that I would buy it that one. I, I would buy direct from Disney and you got to buy a certain amount to be able to use them at every resort. But Disney offers all their resorts. You may just have to be on a wait list, but you can be on all of them. And ours is not one of the ones that they say they're offering right now. So <laughs> again, that that's a whole separate video I would have to do on Disney Vacation Club. But you will be able to purchase Riviera Resort starting April 15th. Okay. The popular egg extravaganza scavenger hunt returns to the Disneyland Resort April 5th through 21 of this year. So fun. 
And they also have an egg scavenger hunt at Epcot during the Flower and Garden Festival at the same time. Um, okay, this is also for Disney Vacation Club members. Disney has just announced that for one night only, Star Wars Galax Galactic Gathering will return to the World Showplace Pavilion at Epcot into an exclusive Star Wars experience for Disney Vacation Club members and their guests on April 10th from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. I will not be there during this time, but this sounds interesting. Um, during this membership magic event, Disney Vacation Club members and special guests will enjoy Star Wars themed foods and beverages, meet favorite Star Wars characters, pose for photos with Star Wars set pieces, props, and more. The culinary team behind this event has developed a carefully crafted menu that promises to satisfy even a Wookiee-sized appetite. The epic lineup includes hors d'oeuvres, specialty beverages, and all you can uh, care to enjoy buffet featuring a salad cone station. Try the indoor couscous, it says. A small bite station, including a Tatooine cheeseburger spring roll. A bowl action station with Alderaan bean wat with basmati scented rice and cilantro, among other options. And a carving station. Sweet options range from a blue milk panna cotta to Darth Vader cupcakes to BB-8 mousse domes. Almost like a zebra dome. Um... So that is at the Star Wars Experience, which is only for Disney Vacation Club members on April 10th at Epcot. Um, a DJ will also be performing and providing a stellar soundtrack to transport guests to their favorite Star Wars planets. The cost per person is $225. Again, it's like 6 to 8.30 p.m. $225 for adults, $210 for children, and that does include your tax and gratuity. And separate theme park admission is also required. So you have to have a park ticket as well. Eligible members can book this experience for themselves and as many as five guests per membership. And you have to make reservations online. So if you're a Disney Vacation Club member, you probably already know about this. But if you're going to be there April 10th and you want to go, that's what it's going to be. Um, the brand, the very first Halloween Horror Nights 29 house was announced um, this week, and it's going to be Stranger Things, and it will have experiences from season two and three, which three is going to be released this summer, starting July 4th, so on Netflix. So, if you like that show, if you're a fan of it, or you like Hall Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Orlando Resort or Universal Hollywood, then you're going to enjoy this uh, announcement of their first house, Stranger Things. So, there you go. And this time it says they've got Demodogs as part of the house. Um, so there you go. Tickets are already on sale. All right. So I've already told you about the new stroller restrictions, smoking restrictions, loose ice restrictions at Disney World and Disneyland, that standby access will not be offered to Galaxy's Edge, and your time will be restricted in the land when you're at Disneyland. <laughs> All right, I've already told you about those things. I just did it from memory. I didn't read it. <laughs> okay, there's a limited time ticket offer that's coming for Halloween Horror Nights. You can get a second night free when you buy one event night. Purchase now through June 5th to get this deal starting from $81.99 per person plus tax. Again, Halloween Horror Nights happens at Universal Orlando Resort. That is not Disney not owned by Disney, it's owned by NBC. <laughs> so that is a whole different, whole different area of Orlando, okay? But it is a scarier Halloween event. You know, Disney World has Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. It's very tame. <laughs> it has the villains come out, but not too scary. Um, this one is Halloween Horror Nights. It has an age limit of 13 and up. It has a warning on here, and it says not suitable for kids under at the age of 13. Every year people try to bring them, but I don't know why. So it is very scary. If your child is under the age of 13, you really need to consider it before you go to Halloween Horror Nights, okay? Um, ABC Commissary, which is a counter service, quick service, whatever you want to call it, restaurant in Hollywood Studios, um, is going to go undergo some enhancements starting soon and also will be available to book reservations for. So this will make, I think, the third quick service restaurant on property where you can book advanced reservations for it. OK, it's still a quick service credit, but you can book your reservations in advance. The reason they're doing this, I feel, is when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opens, there's not going to be a ton of places to eat, like when you're waiting in a long line or you're trying to, you know, get something to eat while you're in line or waiting to go into the land or whatever. And they're filling up pretty fast, like 
50s primetime cafe or sci-fi dine-in or you know whatever so the places that do have reservations are filling up so i think what they're doing now is trying to offer an alternative so abc commissary is right there on commissary lane before you get to where star wars Gal grand avenue where star wars galaxy's edge entrance will be in hollywood studios so i think what they're doing is trying to offer a way for people to make sure they have a reservation to eat food <laughs> you know if they're waiting to get into the land so um abc commissary is changing its fast casual dinner experience to accept reservations. Guests who book dining times in advance now have priority entry. Reservations are now open for dates beginning June 2nd and beyond and can be booked via the My Disney Experience app or by calling Disney Dining, My Disney Experience website, or by your lovely travel agent if you want me to book you one. Um, each night starting at four, guests with reservations are invited to place their order take a pager and find a comfortable seat. Then when the order is ready, a cast member will bring your food to your table. Um, this appears to be very similar to the system over at Be Our Guest in the Magic Kingdom. Um, also, Pizza Fari has a quick service thing that you can make reservations for for dinner as well. So they're all quick service restaurants um, and Be Our Guest is quick service for breakfast and lunch, but they allow you to order like at your cash register or with a cashier, you place your order um, and then you go sit at your table and they bring your food to you. So it's still a quick service credit, but you can make an advanced reservation um, to be sure you have a time starting at 4 p.m. or after. And this is starting June 2nd at Hollywood Studios in ABC Commissary. Um, now, ABC Commissary was where I was told to go in Hollywood Studios because of my food allergies. I tried to eat at several of the places on Sunset Boulevard. There's several there together um, in like a Sunset Market or whatever. Um, but none of them could accommodate my allergies. And they said, we really, all of this stuff is pre-made, pre-packaged here. You really need to go to ABC Commissary because they share a kitchen over there um, and they are able to accommodate allergies better. So I went over to ABC Commissary. It was a nightmare. I mean, there was like people everywhere. I was just trying to get something to eat. My, the rest of my family had already gotten something to eat from one of those places on Sunset Market. They had already finished their food while well, I was still waiting in line to order. So it is pretty nuts over there. And really, the food's not that great. And I didn't have that many choices anyway. So um, if you eating quick service, if you have allergies in Hollywood Studios, is difficult. So ABC Commissary is one of the few places they tell you to go. So if you need reservations for that, I recommend it just because it's already busy. But when Galaxy's Edge opens, it's going to be even more busy. So if that's one of the quick services you think you'll want to eat at while you're at Hollywood Studios, it would not hurt to go ahead and make a reservation. My favorite place to eat, of course, it's not near Galaxy's Edge unless, well, until they open the second entrance, is in Toy Story Land at Woody's Lunchbox. I love that place for allergies. So <laughs> it's wonderful. It's a quick service restaurant. All right. Earlier this year, Disney Parks blog shared about Project Stardust, which is the, the what they're calling the project to expand their walkways and give more seating and whatever for people who are waiting in line for Galaxy's Edge, basically, or who are entering the park to stand in line, um, which includes a number of enhancements that we're making to the Disneyland Resort, specifically Disneyland Park, to continue to deliver a world-class guest experience. While carrying forward Walt Disney's original vision, the improvements range from beautification to maximizing guest comfort and improving guest flow as we prepare the theme park for its next phase of significant growth, starting with Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. We are also adding more parking and enhancing the guest arrival experience. Last year, we announced plans to build another parking structure adjacent to the Mickey and Friends parking garage. The new structure will be called Pixar Pals. Everything at Disney is an acronym. The acronym for Pixar Pals is PP. So you're gonna make the PP parking garage. <laughs> the Pixar Pals featuring familiar friends from Disney Pixar films such as Coco, Monsters Inc. and Inside Out. Here's what it looks like currently as they're building it. The PP parking garage. <laughs> Uh, they probably hate me saying that. Uh, more than 5,000 parking spaces will be available within the structure. We anticipate it opening no later than the end of July and hopefully sooner. I'm sure they hope sooner because they really wanted this open before Star Wars Galaxy Um The new structure will feature a new electronic parking system to expedite guest parking. They already have this at the Disney Springs parking garages. In the next few months, the Toy Story parking lot will also be extended, expanded with more than 2,000 additional parking spaces and additional entrances. What's more, we will be adding security screening tents before guests board the Toy Story parking lot shuttles. Oh, that's a good idea at Disneyland. To eliminate screening in the Esplanade outside the theme parks at peak times. That's good because a ton of people are probably going to be waiting out there to get in the park. So um, that's a good idea. 
We completed many of the improvements to guest flow and queuing that we shared in an earlier blog post, including the curb grading in Town Square. Work has now begun to open up the walkways in the central plaza, sometimes referred to as the hub, while retaining the intimate feel at the heart of Disneyland Park. In addition to enhancing curbs with slow inclines, we are softening corners on planters to help guests navigate around them. <laughs> we also will be working on the entrance and marquee to Adventureland as part of Project Stardust. We will temporarily take the marquee down to remove a walkway support for ease of guest flow. Other Project Stardust enhancements include policy updates in an effort to make the theme park experience more enjoyable for guests. Here's the Pixar Pals parking garage. Pals. Level one, Incredibles. Level two, Toy Story. Level three, Cars. Oh, no, level two is Coco. Level four, Monsters, Inc. Level five, Nemo. Level six, who is that? Oh, Inside Out. <clears throat> okay, so that's the parking levels at the new Pixar Pals parking garage in Disneyland. <laughs> All right, this week, and I had some clients ask me about this, so pay attention if you are going May or June to Walt Disney World and you were interested in an after hours event at one of the three parks they offer them at Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Animal Kingdom, okay? This event gets you into some of those rides or things that are difficult to get to during the day when it's busy, but you do pay extra for it. So it's a separately ticketed event. It's $125 per person. If you buy the ticket through me in advance, if you wait till you get there, it's $129 a person. Um, so if you're trying to get on Slinky Dog Dash at Hollywood Studios, or if you're trying to get onto Flight of Passage in Animal Kingdom, that's why people really care about this. Or if you're trying to get onto Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Magic Kingdom. So there's there's definitely certain um, rides that people really want these for. I did the after hours event in Magic Kingdom when I was there in February. It was dead. You can see my pictures on my page. I, me and my friend were the only one in our boat and any boats ahead of us or behind us on the Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, there was like no one at the park for that thing. So they really do limit the tickets for it. Um, and it was worth it. I mean, it was worth the price we paid to do it. And you get in starting at 7 p.m., your ticket gets you in, and you go all the way. It's like a three-hour event starting when park closes. So you get all that time, too. Um, but it's really beneficial once the park closes because then you're by yourself with just a few other people. So the Magic Kingdom has added dates for May 2nd, 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. So no dates in June for the Magic Kingdom for after hours. Um, Disney's Animal Kingdom has added May 7th, 14th, and 21st, and June 4th, 11th, and 18th. Um, Disney's Hollywood Studios has added May 1st, 4th, 10th, 17th, 21st, and 31st, and June 14th, 21st, and 28th. So these are the after hours events in those three parks. Um, dates that have been added through June. Also at Hollywood Studios, two special celebration nights will be held, one of which is May 1st, which is the actual 30th anniversary of Hollywood Studios. Celebrate Disney's Hollywood Studios 30th anniversary with special anniversary merchandise, additional character greetings, and more food and beverage offerings to purchase. Also, the new projection show on the castle starts that night um, about Disney animation. And then May 4th, you can celebrate May the 4th be with you Dressed in your best galactic Star Wars attire, prepare yourself for epic counter and character encounters, including Chewbacca with Rey, Darth Vader, Kylo Ren with Captain Phasma, Ewoks, Jawas, and Imperial Stormtroopers. Plus, specialty treats will be available for purchase. Costumes must still abide by our park guidelines. Ice cream, popcorn, and select beverages are all included with your Disney After Hours ticket. Yes, that is true. I got free popcorn, free drinks, free Mickey ice cream bars. Um... Well, it's in part of your $125 you pay per person. Um, so there you go. If you're a Disney Vacation Club member or an annual pass holder, you can get discounted versions of those tickets for $95 a piece. There is a new water slide in town. SeaWorld Orlando's Aquatica Water Park um, has a new water slide. It's called the Weightless Water Slide Experience. It's called Care Care, K-A-R-E, K-A-R-E, Curl. So the Care Care Curl is coming to Aquatico Orlando starting April 12th, pretty soon. Run Disney is having their summer fun run again this year. It is themed, the medals are themed to the 80th anniversary celebration of Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this June through August, Run Disney is celebrating Marvel's 80th with three themed races, including the Black Panther 5K 
and they revealed all the medals today and you can start signing up online today so if you're wanting to do this run disney.com register online for the summer fun runs these are all based on the honor system so once you run your races they'll send you your medals and you i think you put in your time and things like that and those registrations started today at 9 a.m central time so there's the virtual June 5K, which is Captain Marvel themed. There's the virtual July, July 5K, which is Iron Man themed. And there's the virtual August 5K, which is Black Panther themed. And the challenge where you do all three um, is a Marvel's 80th anniversary medal. The mac and cheese food truck that we've already talked about on this show before just opened today at Disney Springs. Yay. Lots of mac and cheese options. My Disney Experience app got an update today, uh, yesterday, yesterday is what I updated it, and the Disneyland app have an update. So if you have either one of those apps, please update them. They have a new home screen that looks like this, the new dynamic home screen, supposed to be easier to read and navigate from. Yes, if it works. But <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been at Disney World recently and you've tried to use their app or if you've been like me, a travel agent, trying to book things for people from the app, no bueno. So here is the new screen that, that is on there when you update the app. Um, it says things like, you know, at the top when your next event is, like mine has a fast pass up there. And then it says um, the hours, the park hours, which is nice because you used to have to click on a button. To find out what the park hours were so if your fast pass or it actually it has all the parks listed there I'm just trying to get it to be not so bright it has all the parks listed there and so Magic Kingdoms over here you can see the castle icon there is the spaceship earth icon for Epcot there's the icon for Hollywood Studios and there's the icon for Animal Kingdom so you just click on the icon and it tells you the park hours for that day and the extra magic hours which if you're not sitting in your resort room in front of the resort TV show <laughs> then you won't know what those are. So I'm glad they added that to the app. You can now take actions with ease is what it says. This is what happens when you press the plus key at the bottom of the page. You'll see get fast passes, reserve dining, order food, that's mobile order, shop memory maker, and buy tickets and passes. So that's what comes up when you press the plus button now. Um, this is mine. I logged in and uh, so I could see what it says. It shows my next reservation at Coronado Springs. Um, it says skip the line, order food. It has a bunch of ads on there. Um, it said Disney after hours event is happening that night at Animal Kingdom Park. Um, and then it says Magic Kingdom Park's hours for the day I was on there, which was Thursday. Um, also, it shows my next dining reservation, which is a buffet with character at the Crystal Palace on Monday, September 2nd. Min, uh, it tells me how to get take a minivan, which actually, when you press on that, takes you to the Lyft app, which I already have downloaded. Um, and then it's my photo pass stuff at the bottom there. If you go into the map and you click on the middle button, this is what comes down. So on the map, you can see wait times, attractions, characters, dining, entertainment, restrooms, events and tours, photo pass, guest services, shops, resort, hotels, and transportation. Um, and then once you click on one of those things, you can either choose to see them like as little um, arrow icons on the map, like in their actual location, or you can choose to see them as a list um, listed out for you. And I'll show you that right on here. This thing says filters. So I filtered it for a certain park. And then over here, it says show list. If you click on that, it shows them in a list. Um, and again, the plus sign, this is what it shows when you click on the plus sign. Oh, come on, Mike. Get fast passes, reserve dining, order food, shop gifts and gear, memory maker tickets. All right, so I clicked on list to show the list when I was on the Magic Kingdom map, and it shows you the wait times for all those rides there. And you'll notice these little white things at the top are the actual markers on the map where those things are located, and it'll say the wait time on the markers too, but I like to see it in the list. It's easier to read. Um, but here's what it looks like without the list. And you have to use your fingers to expand the map so you can read each individual ride. So that's why I do show list. Finally, if you click on search, this is the search option that comes up. And you can click in anything you're looking for. It shows the most popular searches like the Play Disney Parks app, which is what you'll need to play in Star Wars land. Uh, Soarin', Star Wars, Rivers of Light, restrooms. <laughs> yeah. All right. When you go on your personal page, which is the last icon at the bottom, 
it has your name at the top and your character if you've chosen one. Mine is Belle, my favorite princess. Then it says shop merchandise, photos, mobile food orders, resort hotel, my plans, tickets and passes, or go to the Play Disney Parks app. So that's what the whole thing looks like new. So just wanted to show it to you. Do your latest updates. So you have that on there. Um, the app has been a nightmare this week uh, for several reasons, one of which we'll talk about in a second. <laughs> so April 15th, the new Toy Story Spirit jersey is going to be available on the Disney Store or shopdisney.com. That's cute. Might have to have that. You know how I love my spirit jerseys. All right. The spectacular magic of Disney animation and music will soon come to life in the 3D movie musical Mickey's Philhar Magic at Disney's California Adventure. Yay! Disneyland does not have this. And they have it in the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. And I just love this attraction. It's called Mickey's Philhar Magic. And it's like this 4D little show in this theater. And it happens like every 15 minutes. So you don't really need a fast pass for it. They offer fast passes, but it's never full. So you go into the theater and watch it, and it's so funny and musical, and I love it. And it has music from your favorite movies. And um, it's a great show to go to if it's hot outside or if it's raining or if you're looking for something to pass the time till next Fast Pass shows up. It's just great. So that is, or if your kid needs to take a nap, whatever. So it's great, and now it's coming to Disney's California Adventure Park. So yay, y'all get to experience it when we go. Um, premiering in April at the Sunset Showcase Theater in Hollywood Land at Disney's California Adventure Park, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and other favorite Disney characters will take the stage in this 3D fantasy adventure. As Donald prepares the orchestra for Mickey, he comes across the conductor's his conductor's baton and Mickey's sorcerer hat. A little magic goes a long way and proceedings go awry. Donald is unexpectedly plunged into a 3D dream world and you're taken along for the ride. The experience will sweep you away into the fantastic world of classic Disney animated musical sequences from Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, Peter Pan, and Aladdin, and Lion King, among others. So, April, when that starts at Disney's California Adventure. Yay. Um, talk about this. Okay, for the Kids Fly Free Frontier discount that we talked about, Frontier Airlines, um, you must be a member of their Discount Den membership, which means you pay $59 a year. I think Spirit has one too. Um, so you cannot book the Kids Fly Free flights without a membership into that. You go in, you log into your account, you search for your desired route, including the number of adults and children that will be on the reservation. You'll notice that only Discount Den pricing appears since only Discount Den members can book these flights past August 11th. Your flight options will appear and you'll see the kids fly free icon below the flight price on eligible dates. So definitely join that if you want to get those kids fly free prices on Frontier Airlines. Um, D23 is having an event at Hollywood Studios on May 1st to celebrate. This is the Disney fan club. If you're not a member, you can join it, d23.com. Um, for gold and gold family members, you will have the opportunity to purchase a D23 30th anniversary fan celebration pass that started today, actually, um, that adds some D23 exclusive activities to your day for $30 a person plus a $7 processing fee. They went on sale today at noon. So if there's any left, <laughs> the D23 30th anniversary fan celebration pass includes the following at Disney's Hollywood Studios on May 1st. You can reserve VIP viewing for the 30th anniversary celebration moment. Don't know what that is yet. Um, three Fast Pass Plus attraction experiences. Oh, that's nice. Priority access for the all new Lightning McQueen Racing Academy that starts actually Sunday. Mm -hmm. Reserve viewing to the debut of Wonderful World of Animation, which is the new projection show in the Chinese theater. D23 exclusive gift created specifically for this anniversary celebration. Don't know what that is. FastPass Plus and priority and entrance details will be preloaded and communicated to you prior to your event day. Throughout the day, attendees are welcome to explore the magic of the movies, meet fellow Disney fans, and celebrate 30 years of Hollywood Studios. D23 event check-in will take place from 8.45 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. near the entrance of Disney's Hollywood Studios. Further details will be communicated to confirmed attendees at a later date. You may reserve a ticket for yourself and one guest if you're a gold member, and family members may reserve a ticket for themselves and up to three guests. It, this experience does not include admission to Hollywood Studios. You must have a ticket to the park in addition to your admission to this D23 event. 
Guests under 14 must be accompanied by a guest ages 14 or older to enter this event. You must log into your D23 account to reserve tickets. All right. All right, the Lightning McQueen Show starts Sunday, March 31st at Hollywood Studios. During this 10-minute show, Lightning McQueen appears live on stage to share his racing knowledge. And if there's one thing that he's learned over the years is that things don't always go as planned. But with the help of Mater, Cruz, Ramirez, and other friends from Radiator Springs, Lightning is bound to get back on track. Guests can indulge in more cars fun in the courtyard outside Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy, including meeting Piston Cup, champion Cruz Ramirez and jamming to an incredible music mix from DJ the ultimate party on wheels. Lightning McQueen's pit crew will also arrive on the scene several times a day for DJ's ready set party time which invites guests to gather around DJ for cars inspired dancing and games. The opening of Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy is the latest step in the park's multi-year transformation which will mark its 30th anniversary on May 1st. Now through June 16th, guests at Disneyland Paris can enjoy even more action and interactive experiences at Walt Disney Studios Park during Marvel season of superheroes, including a chance to see Captain Marvel and Groot for the first time at Disneyland Paris. Legendary Marvel superheroes such as Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, Spider-Man, Thor, Black Widow, Black Panther, Captain America, Gamora, and Star-Lord will all make appearances during this epic season. Guests can spot Captain Marvel and Stark Expo make way for a better tomorrow as Tony Stark presents the latest version of his revolutionary invention, an arc reactor that generates green energy. When the mischievous Loki makes an appearance, Captain Marvel joins Spider-Man and Thor to save the day as action-packed excitement unfolds at the foot of the Hollywood Tower Hotel. Enhanced special effects during the spectacular Marvel Super Heroes United show promise even more action as iconic figures from the Marvel Universe embark on a thrilling mission to fight against Thanos at Studio Theater. Meanwhile, the production courtyard plays host to the Guardians of the Galaxy awesome dance-off featuring the best songs from the saga. Guests can again experience heroic encounters with Captain America and now Spider-Man and Captain Marvel during Marvel season of superheroes. Fans of all ages even have the opportunity to transform into their favorite heroes thanks to new shopping options with must-have items at Constellations, Les Legendes de Hollywood, <laughs> and the Disney Store at Disney Village. And of course, an epic Marvel foodie experience is available, including Groot-shaped shortbread cookies, baby Groot chocolate mousse, waffles adorned with Captain Marvel's, Marvel's logo, and more. So that's all at Disneyland Paris this summer through June 16th. Um, if you, this is a sad note, I <laughs> got to end our show today, but if you had bought food or used your card um, at Planet Hollywood, Chicken Guy, or Earl of Sandwich, which is all Earl Enterprises or owned by Earl Enterprises, in Disney Springs at Walt Disney World from the dates of May 23rd, 2018 through March 18th, 2019, they had a data breach and they have notified you of this data breach. So check your cards for wayward charges or you may want to um, do whatever they suggest in this email they're sending out to people but again that's May 23rd 2018 to March 18th 2019 if you ate at Planet Hollywood Chicken Guy or Earl of Sandwich or used your card there during those dates that's it I should end on something else <laughs> what else can I say hmm oh I didn't talk about ticket price increases yeah <laughs> so the reason the Walt Disney World um, my Disney experience app is currently messed up and has been for days now. The reason their website is messed up and has been for days now is there were some ticket price increases and package increases that happened. So we were expecting ever since ticket prices, individual ticket prices, like buying tickets outside of a resort package, ever since those prices increased on March 12th, historically, the pack the ticket prices in a package you know a room package will also increase so we knew it was coming or we expected it but disney does not tell us when nor do they make announcements once it happens so <laughs> usually just the site starts messing up because they mess with the coding so basically what happened was we thought it was gonna be sunday because normally ticket prices happen on a sunday it wasn't it was monday so ever since monday they have been having issues because they got new coding on the site and that new coding was increasing the ticket prices inside of packages for walt disney world so if you have a quote for me and you have not booked your package yet so sorry your quote's gonna go up so ticket prices increased in packages starting um monday at walt disney world resort also I have been talking to many of the phone agents for Disney travel agents. Hey, Tony, what's up? Um, because 
their site is messed up and it's hard for us to book things right now. So you'll have to call the line. So I've called their line and um, it, it's rough for them too. I mean, guest services is having to override stuff. It's rough. But all that to say, um, what they were telling me, the people who I've talked to this week on the phone, is that in addition to raising prices on packet tickets and packages this week on Monday, um, the Sun and Fun room discount offer that was originally to go through September 30th and that actually expired March 24th, so if you had not booked by then, you weren't going to get it anyway. Um, but that package that went through uh, September 30th was removed. So anything that anybody who was trying to quote that package for the month of September or book it for the month of September, anytime after Galaxy's Edge is supposed to open in Walt Disney World, which is August 29th, um, that discount was removed even before <laughs> it expired. So if you were trying to get that discount or if I quoted you a package in September with that discount, it is no longer available. Once again, it expired March 24th, but it was removed. So that's another coding change that was made. All that to say, I doubt that there will be any other offers released for the end of this year. I was booking a military package uh, for a client this week and for the fall. And she said, book this one. There are no other rooms. There are not two rooms they can get. There's not <laughs> rooms now in this month or through the end of the year. I've checked. They're gone. So that military discount uh, was booked up pretty fast after Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opening dates were announced. And they only set aside like a certain number of rooms for any discount, including the military one. So um, it's gone for the whole end of the year. October on, you will not be able to find one or you'll be hard pressed to find one. So all that to say, they're removing discounts in September because the Galaxy's Edge will be open. Uh, military discounts are gone. They're all booked up, most of them. So what I can tell you that means is, <laughs> and I would be shocked if this isn't true, um, Disney only offers discounts when they have to. Okay, so when they're trying to book up rooms, that's why they were offering the Sun and Fun offer because summer is soft. You could still book a summer package. You're just not going to get a discount anymore. But you could still book a summer package and at the last minute and be okay, availability-wise. But in the fall, August 29th and after at Walt Disney World, there are, all the discounts have been removed, and I don't see any future for any more to be added. I could be wrong on that, um, and that may be for the foreseeable future, because they're going to open Rise of the Resistance separately, so have a phase two opening of Galaxy's Edge. That'll probably happen towards the end of this year, uh, or whenever they're done with it, which I would guess would be around December, which is when we were originally thinking Galaxy's Edge was open. So, I mean, when they do that, it's just going to be a whole another phase of people who want to go and ride that ride. So I doubt that they're going to have any trouble booking rooms through the end of the year. So once Galaxy's Edge opens through the end of the year and even into the next year, I doubt they're going to have trouble. Now, I could be wrong. You know, maybe the regular Disney people that are just going to see Disney don't care about Galaxy's Edge, and that's not why they're booking. I mean, I could be totally wrong. But it's what I've noticed is I think Disney is thinking – we will have no trouble booking up all these rooms. We are not going to offer any discounts for the rest of the year. And mind you, they already offered what normally is offered in the fall for the summer. And it ended booking on like February 10th. So that was free dining. Free dining was offered in the summer this year. So if you did not get it, you will not. I doubt that they are going to offer free dining in the fall because they offered it in the summer because Galaxy's Edge opens August 29th. They do not need to fill rooms. So if Disney does not need to fill rooms, they do not need to offer a discount. So if you were planning on going later on in this year and you were hoping they would release a discount, I would tell you that realistically, your hopes are probably not going to come true. Um, it will only happen if bookings are soft and they need to book up rooms. That's the only way it'll happen. But right now, I have no hope that they're going to offer any discounts for the rest of this year. They went through the September 30th, and then they took away the ones in September. <laughs> the ones that went from September 1st through 30th, boop, removed them from the system. Not even an option. So I would be surprised if they would add another one, but I could be wrong. But this is what I've warned you about for the last year now, since we've known that Galaxy's Edge was going to come in the fall. I would doubt there was going to be any discounts, but... Again, I could be completely wrong. If there are and you're already booked with me, I'm obviously going to book you on the discount if it saves you money. But I just, um, 
doubt that that's going to happen. And now your ticket prices have gone up in your package from whatever I quoted you. So um, the prices are not going down. So if you're wanting to go, <laughs> um, you want to book before they raise them again, because typically they also raise prices at the end of August, at the end of the summer. So um, ticket prices. So if you're if you're wanting to book, I would definitely book before then, you know, because um, they typically do price increases twice a year. So on that happy note, <laughs> that's all the news I have for you today. So I will talk to you again next week. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you missed anything, obviously you can rewatch uh, from the beginning later on as you have time, or you can watch it on my YouTube channel. Talk to you later.